It's very easy to say, I'm gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna be a good person. But come under oppression, come into poverty, come into watching your daughter starve, come into watching your other daughter be killed, come to watching your sons being buried and people mocking. Come to those states watching the people who are with you, who trust you, believe in you, love you, will die for you. And you watch them get severed and killed and persecuted. Then try doing the right thing. 1,500 years worth of atheists and orientalists who have looked into this man's life. They looked at his response at time of extreme difficulty. Who was he really? He is a mercy to mankind. He passes no man except that he would smile. He would not walk past the indigent or the destitute without offering or lending aid, etc. This man at his worst when he had nothing and someone else who had a little. But still they were ungrateful. They would beg, please give me. And he had nothing. He would say, wait, I'll be back. And he would go find another person that trusted him and said, brother, let me borrow a few things. And he would borrow and he would come back and he would give. The merciful man, Muhammad, the kindest, most gentlest man from the lips and the tongues of the kuffar themselves, not even from the believers, from the Quraysh, his staunch enemies would say, there is no man like Muhammad, he is Alameen, the most trustworthy. Though we hate him, though we want to kill him, they would say, they would bring their wealth to him and say, watch over this for me this month, I'm going away, I'll be back. I don't trust anyone else. The true strength from all that compassion, all that mercy harnessed in his soul that made him able to truly have al walah wal barah love that which Allah loves and hate for that which Allah hates. This man, when needed to, when it was a must, he took them down, he beat them down, he defeated them when he needed to, without hesitation. He drew his sword, he drew his dagger, he fought with whatever he had, and he would not hesitate. And he would send them back to Allah. He was no weakling, he was no wimp, he was no coward, he was not afraid. This man was a warrior. Muhammad transformed armies of Arabia to his successors. So his successors after could use them to defeat the armies of Persia, the armies of Byzantium and establish the heartland, the empire of Islam al Khilafah. You're the best person I've ever known. Best friend I've never met. Your sincerity to me is blinding, enough to completely canvas the world with drapes that read respect, honor, love, protect, while creating a window for me to zoom in on the important things, but those are the things that I forget or neglect. I will do better. Your ummah is fine, not because of me or mine or wounds that heal with time, those who would die for a dollar sign, but because a promise is divine. So when we feel like we're at our worst and our sadness would cause our hearts to burst, it feels like there are times when there are angels within our lines or hovering over squares with chants of freedom in the air and though tyrants may step on our necks, we smile for history has always been on our side. Yours is an ummah that simply does not die. I am sorry for my weakness. For every time I've been ashamed of your name and asked someone to call me Mo for not knowing enough about you to defend you when they drew cartoons or accused you with the most heinous of accusations for not getting over my distaste of reading and waiting for Hollywood to put you on the big screen so I could know something about you. As if Steven Spielberg or Mel Gibson or Johnny Depp would somehow be able to recreate the twinkle in your eye or a beautiful bead of sweat as it scaffolds on your forehead, frantically fighting gravity, not wanting to fall off your body. I keep thinking of seeing you. And if you would smile at me, the thought gives me goosebumps. You told me to meet you at the pool. So on that day, I hope and pray that I will see you through the crowd, that no angels barricade me as I sprint at breakneck speed. I hope you recognize it's me. I will crowd the companions to get access to your vision. I will obey my thirst by quenching it from your hands. So until that day, I will pray. 
I will stand and I will pray as if my feet are holding the earth from splitting. If I make it, I cry at the thought of seeing you. For I know the words that I used to read from books with all too thin pages will do no justice to your voice, your scent, your touch, your face. My messenger of Allah has always existed between the curves and dots of the Arabic alphabet. So Muhammad ibn Abdullah in 3D and whatever other dimensions the hereafter brings with it will be an overboard of senses. I will fall in love with your shadow. And will tell Ali that his description did not do justice. Tell my mother Aisha of how we heard her story of how you passed away between her chin and her chest over and over and over again. And it made us cry every single time. For we never suffered any disaster that was greater than what we suffered before our souls merged with flesh of entering an earth that was without you. Does the sky even recognize us anymore? And I will sit in the shade of your smile and will ask you your story directly from your mouth as we sip on Sersabil ice cold and will be terribly embarrassed if you ask me for mine, because I never did anything right other than loving you. And then, if you let me, I would love for a hug.